Welcome. Thank you for choosing to listen to another faith-building message by Pastor David Entry. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the Word of God. May your knowledge of Jesus Christ increase as you listen. Be blessed. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe in miracles and I believe in the power of God in our midst. I believe that tonight God has brought us together one more time. Hallelujah. Put laughter in somebody's mouth. Just like I quoted the other time, Sarah said, The Lord has made me, Genesis chapter 21, verse 5 and 6. The Lord has made me to love. Sarah said, God has made me to love. And all so that all that here will laugh with me. One more time tonight, it's somebody's hour for God to put laughter in your mouth. Now, 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 before we go any further, may I say this, please get this. Just in case you have been weeping, you have been sorrowing, you have been very troubled. And it looks like there is no hope in view. Just in case you are going through a turbulent moment in your life and destiny. And it's, it seems as if there is actually no help in God. Or that there's no help in life. And it, it seems as if you have been left stranded without help. And you don't know where to turn to for help. Just like the psalmist said in Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord which made heaven and the earth. Oh, verse 3 says that he, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keeps you will not doze behind the he- steering wheel. He, won't, he will not even blink an eye. His eye is upon you. His eye is upon you. So he that keeps you will not sleep nor slumber. He that keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is is thy shade upon thy right hand. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. You know, when they say the sun will smite you, unless you keep walking, let's say you somebody has a health condition that gets aggravated and critical under the sun or in sunlight, Okay, in sunlight, like solar solar energy. So solar exposure can trigger an attack. And it says that. So can you imagine how can you escape and hide from the sun? From the inf- direct sun or the, uh, uh, the light of the sun, which is called day. How can someone practically possibly escape from it? But even he said, if... If your problem is going to be the sun, the sun shall not smite thee during the day. And at night, when the moon takes over from the sun, uh, the moon shall not smite thee. So the sun cannot touch you, the moon. So that time you are preserved. Because why? The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy uh, 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 thy right hand. The Lord is thy shade upon. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. He will preserve God. God, the Lord shall preserve thy soul. Thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thee from evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Every evil that has been targeted against you, it is God's job to protect and preserve you. 
to protect and preserve you. It is God's job. And Bible says that God shall preserve you. Even in these days of, of the corona pandemic, God, hey, God shall preserve you. Amen. My God who is real, my God who is here, he will preserve you. Amen. God shall preserve you. Not Amen. only you, everybody who is connected to you. God shall preserve. I'm prophesying. I feel an anointing coming upon your life. S somebody will begin. You can notice that something is taking place. There is a spiritual transaction taking place. Something. There is a transaction taking place in the spirit. As I'm prophesying, I see a transaction is taking place. I said, the Lord shall preserve you. I am talking to somebody. The Lord shall preserve you. The, oh, come, ba, 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 ba. the Lord shall fear not. My brother, don't be afraid. My brother, my sister, don't be afraid. Why? The Lord shall preserve you from Amen. some evil. No. Amen. From certain evil. No. Amen. Watch it. Preve pre preserve you from some evil. From only certain types, oh. from oh. how many? All. Oh. Oh. He shall preserve you from all oh. evil. All oh. evil. I have a feeling, I have a conviction. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I have a conviction that God has assembled us here tonight to give somebody an opportunity to believe this word so it can be triggered into effect in your life. Amen. Listen, God has gathered us here tonight. To believe in God, once you believe in a certain word, the, the word, you trigger the word into effect yeah. in your life. That, that is why it will be very criminal, <laughs> or spiritually speaking. It will be very wrong. It will be professional malpractice for me as a pastor, as a, a servant of God, to come and sit before you or stand before you without a word from a scripture, mm. a reference from what God has said. What have I got to tell you then? What I got, my encouragement and why saying is they don't do it, is the word, is the word. He said, for they are life to those who find them, <laughs> and health to all thy flesh. Proverbs chapter four, verse 20, 21, 20, 23, 24. He says that, let's start from verse 20, please. My son, attend to my words, incline thy ears unto my sayings. Why? Verse 21, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? Why? For they are life. What? The words. is not what the preacher is saying, but the words that are being said. He said, he said, you, if you can attend to the words that are being said, these words are life to those who find them. So guess what? If you haven't found the word is written, you are in danger. Mm -hmm. If you haven't find, if you haven't found what is written, you are in danger. When Satan attacked Jesus, he said it is written. It is written. If you haven't found what is written, it's danger. Bible says that Jesus said in Hebrews, he says, for I be, be lo, I come, Hebrews chapter 10, from verse 5. Uh, lo, I come, for in the volume of the book is written of me. I come to do your will. For in the volume of the books, it is it, of the book, it is written of me. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Whatever concerns your life or concerns whatever God can do for you, it is documented and written in this holy book. Yes. It's, it's, it's not for this is not for ideas mm -hmm. this is for discovery this is to to find yourself to find the plan of god the problem of god for yourself and once you believe it finding it is not enough once you believe it you trigger it into effect in your life Amen. so he said if i if any pastor preaches god's word or is supposed to be preaching and he's not making reference to the word of god as the written word of God, because it must be what is written that must be spoken. We have to speak what is written. In fact, when the Holy Ghost came, the first preaching of the church, the first ever preaching, the first preaching recorded in the Bible by the church, okay, after Jesus left, they went into hiding. The Holy Ghost came and the church was on, uh, uh, out dawn. The first out dawn, when the church was out dawn, the first thing the church did was not to give food. 
not to do, sir, not to build hospital, not to build school, not to build houses, not to build church buildings. The first thing the church did was to preach. As soon as the Holy Ghost came, when they were filled, what the church did out was preaching. It's very important. So the people notice what the, the church has assembled. When the, a, a true church assembles, people will notice there's a church in town. There can be a church, a genuine church of God in town unnoticed. Mm. Mm. And wow. There can be some, some other organizations in town and you will never... Where in United Kingdom, one interesting thing about United Kingdom is there can be a military base near your house and you will never know. Yeah. <laughs> You will never know. There can be a huge Asda Tesco warehouse right near your house, near your neighborhood, and you can live there for 15 years and never know because yeah. you won't even see it. It is, it is you know, but, and, and in the same way, there can be some societies and organizations that have, like Freemason can have a, a meeting or a place near your house. You never know that they are there. Yeah. But not the church. The wow. church, it. A church cannot be a, be in. Jesus himself puts it this way, Matthew chapter chapter five. He said, "A city set on a hill cannot be hid. You don't light a lamp and put it under a bowl. It's not possible." So he said that a, a city. You you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Mm. Even if it's an underground church. There are certain people within the neighborhood who know there's an underground church because mm -hmm. God will be infecting and affecting them. So when the church was born, the first thing the church did was to preach the gospel. That was the first thing the church did. They preached. Now, the first message the church preached, Peter said, please stop castigating and misinterpreting the church. It is always like that. The world will always misinterpret or, or misrepresent the church. Not because they are malicious, but the way they see things, they, it's like, oh, wow, we have never seen anything like this before. This is, no, no. What are these guys doing? Why are they on every evening speaking some shalababa, shalababa? What's going on? What's going on? And the, the initial human reaction is that of criticism or skepticism. So Peter had to tell them, listen, these people are not drunk as ye suppose. They are not drunk. They were seeing signs and wonders, but they chose to interpret the signs and wonders and the strange. In fact, Bible says that they, they said, what we, we have, we have, we, today we are seeing the marvelous works of God or wonders uh, in Arabia. They says that we do hear them speak in tongues of uh, 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 yeah, in, uh, in tongues, the wonderful works of They could hear them in uh, their own language. They, whoa, this, and they were all amazed. They were amazed and they were all amazed. All everybody was amazed at what was happening. And yet they said to one another, What's going on here? What's what's going on? What's on? It's normal for people who are not familiar to, with church to be asking you, What's going on? What's, what are these guys doing? What's going on here? What's going on here? What's what's going on? What's it? What's it? What's this? What's it? How? It's okay. But look, and some went on went as far as saying that these guys are drunk. Mm. Others mocking them said, the, others said, these guys are full of wine. They have, they are drunk. It's amazing how you in your right sense can think that a, someone who is drunk can be able to speak your, your language so well and glorifying God in your own language he doesn't understand. And you choose to say that's drunkenness. Sometimes when the world begins to judge the church, it gets so unscientific, mm -hmm. unreasonable. Mm. Unintelligent about the suppositions mm. is amazing. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> you are, they said they are drunk. And Peter said, no, these guys are not drunk, as you suppose. For it is early hours of the morning. Obviously, Peter has not been to some parts in uh, central London. <laughs> because <laughs> those places, early hours of the morning, people will still be drunk. <laughs> okay. Peter said they are not, they are not drunk, <laughs> as you suppose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> these guys are not drunk. As you suppose. So he told them, then look at that. He told them they are not drunk. Then, but this is that which was spoken. He quoted from what was written, what is spoken. From Joel. This is that which was spoken. The first preaching of the church was directly making reference to scripture. So any preaching that doesn't make reference to scripture, that doesn't make reference to what has been spoken, it's very dangerous. 
It's very, very dangerous. In spite of who is saying it, they might say it with genuine intentions, clean heart, not with any malice or bad motives. But that in itself is dangerous. How can you drive a car and when you started the car, the brakes are off, but you say no problem, we we'll manage, and then you start moving. You have good intentions, but say it's dangerous. Mm. It's, it's dangerous. You can't be on the road without brakes or without steering wheel. You can't. It's dangerous. You will kill people. Mm. You, you will destroy lives. Innocent lives will suffer. For your maybe your intentions are clean, but it's dangerous. In the same way, it is dangerous to attempt to preach without making reference to the scriptures. It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. So anytime I, your pastor, or any other person preaches without making reference to scriptures or basing what they are saying on clear scriptures, they might be right. They might be right in all they are saying, but spiritually it is very dangerous. It is very dangerous. Now back to the point I'm saying, because it says that these words are life to those who find them it's okay. They are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. So when you release these words, these words, they are, he said, go and stand in the temple or in the marketplace. I think, no, in the temple, Acts chapter 5, verse 20. Go, the angel told Peter, go and stand in the temple and tell the people, speak to them these words of life or the words of this life. The people, go and stand in the temple, go, go stand, uh, go, stand and speak in the temple to the, to the people, all the words of, it, these are words of life, the words of this life, you need this. So it says that they are life, the word of God, the scriptures, the Bible, is they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. This is cure all. It's good medication in spite of your state, in spite of what kind of situation it is. They are health, health to all their flesh. And now I am telling you that for you to see the if, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Is someone learning something at all? You're learning. For you, yes. for you, to, for you to see the effect of God's power loaded in his spoken, his written word when spoken, you have to believe, first of all, you have to come into contact with the word. Now, once you come into contact with the word, either spoken or written, once you come into contact with God's word, your responsibility now is to believe the word. And watch this. As soon as you believe the word, the, you trigger the power in the word in, you, in, to take effect in your life. Now, What's the point I've been making all along? That God has assembled us here tonight. Why? So that something will be triggered in your life. Amen. Some goodness, some power, his Amen. power, his glory. Amen. And what is about to be triggered? The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Believe it. As you believe it, you are triggering it. You are triggering the inf impact in your life. You are triggering the impact in your life. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. I'm repeating it. God, the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil, including the pandemic, including all kinds of sicknesses, including all kinds of bad news including troubles and problems and shames and afflictions and wickedness of the devil. God shall preserve you from all evil. Somebody who believes, lift up your right hand and say, the Lord is preserving me from all evil. The Lord is preserving me Say it again with conviction and co co confidence. The Lord is preserving me from all evil. The Lord is preserving me from all evil. Now, Oh. You're about to say it again, but I need you to say it with faith, like someone who believes it. Mm. Okay, forget about me. Forget about me. Concent forget about the Zoom. Concentrate on the word. What God is saying. Do you believe it? Do you believe? He said, Jesus said, do you believe that I, the son of man, am able to do this? The blind man said, yeah, Lord. He said, okay, then be it unto you. Can you imagine? 
They were coming for help. Jesus said, do you believe it? Matthew chapter 9 verse 28. Do you believe that I, the son of man, am able to do this? The blind man said, yeah, Lord. Then he said, okay. You really? Don't beat on you according to your faith. Look, look at it, verse 29. Then he touched you. I said, okay. According to your faith, beat on you. Since you believe it, well, you're taking it. So once you believe the word, now we are going to say it again. But I need you, please, I beg you. I beg you. I, I entreat you. I implore you. Please believe the word, okay? Don't believe me. Don't believe me. Believe the word. Believe the word I'm speaking for this time. Just if you don't, don't bother to believe me. Believe the word and speak the word. And so we are going to speak the word in faith. Bible says, with the heart, man believeth. And then with the mouth, confession is made. So we believe unto righteousness and we confess unto salvation. So you believe and you come. Romans chapter 10. You, you, you believe and you confess. With the heart, man believes. Your heart is there. Not, I'm not talking about your physical organ heart that pumps blood. I'm talking about your core, your, the, the center of your being. The core existence of yourself. You want to say, you want to believe, and no one can believe for you. No one can believe for you. You have to believe it. And as you believe it, listen, as you believe it, Satan will begin to remind you of, the, well, <laughs> this is not what the Bible is talking about, not you, not your situation. Yes, your yes, situation yes. is different. Satan will begin to also speak back to you, or your situation will actually speak back to you and tell you, no, no, it's not you. This can be. But ignore that. Choose to believe and confess it. So we are about to say it again. The Lord shall preserve me from all evil. The Lord shall, this is, we are quoting, uh, you are taking the word of God, make it into your own by believing it and speaking it into effect. As soon as you believe it, you trigger its impact. You trigger its blessing in your personal life, in your situation. We are going to say, the Lord shall preserve me from all evil. The Lord shall preserve me from all evil. Are you ready to say and as you are saying it, believe it by faith in your heart. Believe it fully and declare it. Believe it and declare. Now let's go. The Lord, Lord preserve me from all evil. The Lord shall preserve me from all evil. Say it. Lift up your right hand and say it with confidence. The Lord shall preserve me from all evil. The Lord, the Lord shall shall me from all evil. In the name of Jesus. In the, In the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Oh, if I were you, I would shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I would shout hallelujah. I would shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. The Lord shall indeed preserve us from all evil. The Lord dropped something in my heart to talk to somebody that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11 verse 27 and 28 Matthew thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Lord he says uh, but, but let's go to 28 let's just go to 28 Jesus said come Unto me, all. How many? All. all. How many? All. 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 Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. That means your your burden is so heavy; it's too much now. It's too much for me to carry. <laughs> Lord, what I'm going through is too much for me to carry. Ah, there's someone on this platform, and that has been your 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 cry. It's too much. I can't bear it anymore. I came. I have a special word for you. Amen. The Lord said, "Come, come, come unto me. Come Amen. unto me. All right. I'm glad you came on this platform. The Lord said, "Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and what, and what, you don't oh, stay the same." He said, "I, God said, me, me, I, God, I will." Give you, rest. give you rest. I will give you. So come, as you are heavy laden, as you labor and are heavy laden, God said, I am actually also ready to give you rest. Amen. Come unto me, all ye that labor. Sister, I know it's been kind of a, a very funny season in your life. Brother, it's been very uh, kind of
in a very disturbing season in your life. It doesn't actually make sense. It's, it's a season that does not make sense at all. It's like, and you are very troubled. Heavy laden. Ma'am, I know uh, you are heavy laden. You are, you are, you labor. Sometimes you labor even to sleep. You are asleep, but you can't sleep. Because what is going on? It's heartbreaking. It's, it's peace, peace robbing. It robs you of your peace. Yeah. What is going on? It's, 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 it's not good. It troubles you. I remember somebody said, um, how, how, how can I be happy when I think in Nehemiah or Ezra, Nehemiah, how can I be happy when the sepul my father's sepulchre, or when tro there's trouble back home? There's trouble. How, how can I be happy? How can there be peace? And then uh, somebody asks, Jezebel asks somebody, is there peace? Or no, Ahab. He said, how can there be peace when in, with your mother Jezebel's, I think first Kings or chapter 21, sorry. your mother Jezebel's whoredom and witchcraft behavior, how can there be peace with all what Jezebel is doing? Sometimes people are trying to say, oh, don't worry, don't worry. But how can I don't worry when the thing is growing? Wow. Okay, how can I don't worry? It came to pass. Yeah, oh, second Kings is chapter nine. It came to pass. When Joram saw Jehu, that he said, is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, what peace? As long as the whoredom of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcraft are so many, how can there be peace? Sometimes, this one is telling you, you'll be fine. And you're wondering, do you understand what you're talking about? <laughs> but I came, I came to tell you, in spite of the practical and obvious issues that dictate your perturbedness, your confusion, that warrants your sorrow. I came with a superior, superior word, a superior fact that Jesus said, come unto me. You are tired, come unto me. In fact, First Peter chapter 5, verse 7, puts it this way, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Casting all your care upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. Jesus cares for you. Um, when we read Mark chapter, was it eight or seven? I think it's chapter seven, where the, the multitude from verse one to three, Bible said the multitude came. Yeah, chapter eight yesterday. Uh, they didn't, just, I like it. In, in, in verse, chapter eight, verse one. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat. There are a lot of them, but there was nothing to it. Jesus called his disciples mm -hmm. and said, said unto them, what, what, uh, what shall we do? I have, Jesus said, I have compassion on this multitude because they have now been with me for 15 days of encounter night. <laughs> encounter fest. <laughs> and have still nothing to show for it. Jesus, Jesus has, he, he said, I have compassion on the multitude. Because these are people who don't have anything to eat. So don't think that God does not care about what you are going through. He said, ask him all your care upon him, for he cares for you. I just, I just didn't want to zoom in without giving somebody this clear prophetic word I, I heard from God to tell wow. somebody. Wow. You are on this platform and you are, you, you are just like coasting and seeing, maybe, but you are tired. You are you are tired. Just that you can't give up. Because if you even give up, it's like you are in the sea, in a, in a boat. You can't give up and jump in the sea because the sharks will eat you. But in the boat, the snakes are biting you. <laughs> and so it's, it's just, if they, it's, but I, I have a word from God for somebody. Thank you, Lord. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. There is rest. There is rest in God for you. Amen. I know. I know the situation has gone on for a bit, but don't worry. The rest of God will take into consideration all that you have been through, and there will be 
corresponding compensation for Amen. you. There will be corresponding Amen. compensation. So shall it be. I don't know who I'm talking to, yeah. but I believe I came with two prophetic words. Yeah. Number one is yeah. the Lord shall preserve, preserve you from all evil. Number two, come unto me, all those who are who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Whoever it concerns, this is a direct work from God. Yes. Believe yes. it yes. and see yes. the effect in your life. Yes. Believe it and see the effect. Amen. This kind of thing, you don't you might not even need a declaration. As you believe it, the effect takes yeah. takes, takes in yes. right away. Because Amen. you have believed the pure, direct word Amen. of God. So shall it be in Jesus' Amen. name. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Amen. Thank you for listening. To hear more from David Entry, follow him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel at Karen's Church and subscribe to our podcast so you are always up to date. Be blessed.